All right, anyway, let's watch this video. First playing through the ancient sacrifice of Sacred Brocade quest, I was a little confused as to why Fujin was referring to the ley lines as spirit veins. At least I assumed she was talking about the ley lines. After yep, all, they're responsible for most of the stuff that goes wrong into that, so why should this instance be any different? But the more I thought about it, the less convinced I became, and the more I poked the lore bear, the more the lore bear poked back. And now I think there's a compelling case to be made for the ley lines and spirit veins to be two separate but similar systems. Hmm. And also, uh, to your question about uh, Hades, yeah, I'm going to play it when the game is actually out and not in early access. That has a lot of very interesting implications. In fact, what I found might explain what the Enigmatic Loom of Fate is and how Celestia uses it to control to that. So, in this video, we're going to talk about the spirit veins, the ley lines, dragons, Celestia, fate, and everything in between. I'm going to do my best to keep things as simple as possible, but just know that I'm by the end of things, out of my mind. Uh, it might get a little weird. But that's also pretty on brand for me, so yeah. And before we start, I have to give a big shout out to my lore buddies, Crystal Marie and Shalandia, for lending me their expertise because I don't. I don't think I would have been able to explain some of the concepts in this video without spoilers their help. Spoilers for this quest. Alrighty, I welcome guys, you know the spoilers. The Timestamp. Spoiler warning. Here's, here's the thing. I welcome the spoilers for the world quest because I'm going to be honest. I do skip through a lot of the uh, world quest dialogue. So they sound. I said the same thing, Jumps. I said the same goddamn thing. Oh, they're auto? Then never mind. Warning, citations, attributions, and links for further reading or watching will be in the description box while post video notes and corrections can be found in the pinned comment. But before we go down this weird little rabbit hole, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor. You motherfucker, I swear to God, if it's Surfshark, I just want to see it. What is it? What's the sponsor? Oh my God, the sponsor is Sayu Apparel at s-tierapparelclub.com. Oh my God, exclamation point style, and you can get some Sayu clothes available until the end of May. Wow, gosh, gee, thanks, Ashikai. I knew, gosh, I didn't know you were a fan of the Sayu clothing. Fuck, bro, that's awesome. That That's a great sponsor. You know what, I take everything I said back Man, you, 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 it'll, you can only get it until May 31st. Ah, oh, man, you guys better go do it. You, got, you guys better go to s-heroproclub.com and don't ever complain that I didn't promote it. Anyway, uh, thanks, Ashikai. All right, what's your actual sponsor? Today's video, the Red Magic 9 Pro. The what? <laughs> anyway. Yo, to anybody who needs a, a phone that has uh, only 250 gigs. Okay, never mind. You need a better phone. Um... By answering the question that started yes. this investigation in the first place. What the heck is a spirit vein? As you might have guessed from the intro, I was convinced that Genshin was going to make spirit veins and ley lines the same thing, based on how Fujin was talking about the spirit veins. I thought that maybe spirit veins was just what people called the ley lines thousands of years ago. Hmm, after all, fair. Fujin has been pretty isolated since the end of the Archon War. But after a little digging, I realized that this isn't the first time we've ever heard of the spirit veins in-game. They got mentioned once during the Sacred Sakura Cleansing Quest, and a couple hmm. more times during the quest to unlock Enkanamiya. And neither of those mentions support the hypothesis that the spirit veins are just an ancient name for the ley lines. That's fair. For example, it just doesn't make sense for modern Watatsumi priestesses to use an archaic name for the ley lines, especially with regular people who wouldn't recognize the term to begin with. It would just be confusing. And even then, Ejdeha calls them the ley lines, and he's definitely way more ancient than Fujin and Watatsumi's priestesses. But while none of this could disprove the idea mm. that spirit veins is another name for ley lines, it at least confirms that they were always referred to as ley lines, even if they really might have had another name. But if that's all there was to it, I would not be making this video right now. So by sheer coincidence, I happened to find the term spirit veins tucked away inside of a glossary of terms for Xianxia novels. But in order Yen to explain the significance the of this, stuff. I should probably explain what Xianxia is because Genshin is heavily influenced by it. Xianxia is a popular genre of Chinese high fantasy fiction based on Taoism with common sets of tropes, archetypes, and world building. Now, most Xianxia stories prominently feature people who are trying to achieve godhood through a process called mm. cultivation. In Genshin, this is usually called enlightenment or illumination, and it involves mastering control wow. over one's chi. So chi oh, goes damn, by a lot of panda? names like mana or even... It was a joke. Uh, it was a joke chat. Relax. Also, I think these are auto-generated, so that's the only thing with these subtitles. There's no actual subtitles. They're auto-generated, so... Anyway. 
spiritual energy, but essentially it's sort of like divine energy that's present within everything, which is why cultivating chi inside of the human body can allow a person to become a god. The chi energy that they accumulate makes them divine. Now in Chinese, the adepti are called xian. Still the biggest fucking crime you could have done to those two. I can't believe it. To this day, I'm upset. Name that refers to Taoist immortals, or to put it another way, those who have achieved godhood. So in this hey, context, the adeptal energy you, should be divine immortal. energy, Speaking the energy or power of a god. In other words, adeptal power is the power of qi, and qi is divine power. And we can confirm this relationship by looking at the sigils of permission, because these talismans were infused with adeptal power that were explicitly oh, stated to have been created during the Archon War in order to allow normal humans to channel divine power. This suggests that adeptal powers are not elemental powers. Huh. These are two different and distinct types of magic energy. Now in Xianxia, Qi flows through channels called meridians. You can think of meridians as blood vessels carrying Qi instead of blood. They're even appropriately referred to as veins in Chinese. For example, meridians of Qi within the human body are called Jingmai, which means vital veins. Meridians in the earth- She has to do that in her Serena teapot, right? Like, she has to, right? Like, that's how, that's how she films these. There's no other way. Earth are aptly called Earth Veins and conveniently share their Chinese name, Dimai, with Genshin's Ley Lines. Now, sometimes in Xianxia, the Earth Veins and the Spirit Veins, known as Lingmai, are the same thing, while other times Spirit Veins are synonymous with the body's vital veins. Uh, hold on. What the fuck? Oh! Sorry, I just... I just got a really cool email. Me. <laughs> Sorry. I, I just got a really cool email. Well, hot damn. Well, that's neat. <laughs> it's me, email. Anyways, <laughs> Simba, you weren't supposed to say. <laughs> instead. It really depends on what the author wants to do. But what convinced me that the ley lines and the spirit veins were truly separate things in Genshin are these things called spirit stones. These are crystals made of condensed chi that form at certain points within the spirit veins, kind of like ore deposits. But in Genshin, a spirit hey, stone Hey, thank you for the raid, Miss Shadow Lovely. Sorry, I, I gotta rewind anyway. Uh, thanks for the raid, Miss Shadow Lovely. Hope you had a good stream, Liz. I uh, hope you had a good time. How's it going, Raiders? I'm Sayu. These cyborgs say you have always Sino and Genshin, Genuine and Honkai Star, and many other things. If you'd like to know what else I've been in, exclamation point VA in the chat. If you'd like to buy Sayu merch, exclamation point style in the chat. Uh, and also, uh, I don't know if Liz informed you guys, and I actually haven't told chat. Simba will be happy. <laughs> Tomorrow is another Scuff Crew collab. Sorry. Another chaos collab, whatever crew fucking thing we call it. It's another collab! And guess what, chat? Um, <clears throat> I got to pick. And we're fucking playing Uno! Yes, sir! Uno! I'm fucking ready, baby! And I swear to God, I helped Monarch make her uno work if it doesn't work tomorrow it's on her i'm just saying i'm just saying anyway yeah thanks for the radio list hope you had a good i hope you had a good stream can't wait to play uno tomorrow and just yell at each other stones these are crystals made of condensed chi that form at certain points within the spirit veins kind of like ore deposits but in genshin a spirit stone or ling shi is another name for the celestial nails and we know that the celestial nails belong to celestia and that celestia uses them to counter the effects of the abyss and to tamper with the ley lines now as far as we know elemental energy isn't capable of doing stuff like cleansing abyssal energy the way the celestial nails can so the power within the nails is unlikely to be elemental and given that these nails belong to Celestia, we can reasonably assume that the power within the nails- Wait, hold on. 
I gotta, I gotta back it up over time. What the fuck are we talking about? Veins, known as Ling Mai, are the same thing, while other times spirit veins are synonymous with the body's vital veins instead. It really I've not played on the Wither game yet. I do want to, to on stream. But though. what convinced me that the ley lines and the spirit veins were truly separate things in Genshin are these things called spirit stones. These are crystals okay. made of condensed chi that form at certain points within the spirit veins, oh. kind of like ore deposits. But in Genshin, a spirit stone or Ling Shi is another name for the celestial nail. Hmm. And we know that the celestial nails belong to Celestia, and that Celestia uses them to counter the effects of the abyss and to tamper with the ley lines. Now, as far as we know, elemental energy. Yeah, we knew that. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Am I right, guys? <laughs> we knew that. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, Ashika? <laughs> Energy isn't capable of doing stuff like cleansing abyssal energy the way the celestial nails can. So the power within the nails is unlikely to be elemental. And given that these nails belong to Celestia, we can reasonably assume that the power within the nails must be divine power. Bro, I or played chi, this quest. Or Don't energy. remember it being these from are just Celestia. Three names for the same type of power or energy. Okay, but that so makes way more it's sense. It's easy to say that chi and elemental energy are different, but it's probably not as obvious as to what actually makes them different but the differences themselves are actually pretty straightforward once you know what you're looking at. Elemental energy deals with physical things, while chi deals with more immaterial or conceptual things. Oh? Allow me to explain. Yeah, please. Ley lines and the elemental energy that flow within them make up the basic building blocks of the physical world. Even this loading screen says so. This is why tampering with the ley lines makes all kinds of physical abnormalities Same as Dragon's in the you world, just brought and it up, why yeah. Nahida suggested that Apep's death would force the forest to grow exponentially due to the surplus of dendro elemental energy. Mm. And unlike the earth veins of Xiancha stories, the ley lines have a physical shape. They're the roots of the world tree Ermin Soul. This is why the ley lines can only be found within the earth itself and do not extend beyond the surface of Tevat. Another fun loading screen factoid. So if elemental energy makes up the physical world, then what should the spirit veins do? This isn't a mystery either, actually. Lingwin gives us the answer in the most simplest of terms when she says that adeptal energy, so the power within the spirit veins, the power has within. the power to suppress the power nature within. itself. In other words, chat. I got scared. I got scared. I heard a thump in my house and I thought it was Hayden. And then I remembered Hayden isn't here. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? These animals are going to give me a heart attack, bro. These animals are going to give me a heart attack, dude. <laughs> oh my fucking God, bro. Oh my God. It was Apollo getting in his fucking goddamn bed, dude. I'm going to lose it. Sorry. Oh my god, my heart sank for like a good second and then I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I love these animals, dude, but holy fuck, not having anyone in the house has made me a fucking little bitch. Spirit veins sort of override or command the I physical I definitely haven't world. done this quest. So you remember how I said that the Adepti are Xian and that Xian are basically gods and therefore Adeptal power is divine power? Like yes. the power of God? Well, if Adeptal God. power controls the spirit veins and the spirit veins suppress nature, aka the ley lines, and the ley lines kind of control the whole earth, then the spirit veins must be under the command of the realm of the gods, so like heaven or celestia. In other words, ley lines represent the powers in the earth, while the spirit veins represent the powers of heaven. Heaven issues commands via the spirit veins and the ley lines and the earth have to follow it. Interesting. Chat, so I know that the Archons don't have visions, but does Cloud Retainer have a vision? Or is it one of those fake visions? She does. The Adepti visions are what are fake though? Are they? Is that confirmed? Same as Shao, fake. I think might be fake. Fake. Yeah, she has one, so does Shao. I think it's fake. Shao also has a fake one. Okay. Then okay. Then it is okay. I'm just I'm just making sure, because I was like, really? Because I knew, I remember about the Archons. I wasn't sure about the Adepti. Um, okay. Okay, good to know. Ganyu, no, Shao's is real. Shao's is real. Hmm. Interesting. 
Because, you know, heaven rules over the I'll earth. I'll have to look that up. And this revelation is what led me to believe that the spirit veins are how Celestia forced the dragons who originally ruled this world into submission. Because, see, Bro. the ley lines... Bro. Bro. Submission. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. I'm calling it, chat. I'm calling it. You think by the end, when we get all the elements, we're not going to be using these wings? Bro. Part two of Genshin Impact, we're not into that. We're in Celestia, and we're going to be flying around a la uh, Tears of the Kingdom. All right? I'm just saying. Also, that sword kind of looked gross. Because see. Yes? Hey, Thank you for the 500 bitties. My niece really enjoyed your panels at Anime STL over the weekend. She and her friend even cosplayed. Have some bits. Thank you for the bitties. How old is your niece? Because let me tell you right now, I was uh, kind of unhinged and cursing a lot, so I apologize. But I I'm glad they enjoyed it. The ley lines are the domain of the dragons. In the beginning to that- Wait, 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 the ley lines are what? Are the domain of the dragons. In the beginning to that was ruled what? by dragons, which is why they are considered to be the most- Ashi, you got a like from me just for the fucking persona music primordial of all beings on the planet. They seem to be life forms made of mm. pure elemental energy, the most powerful of which obtain the title of sovereign and command absolute authority over their respective element. The draconic authority mm -hmm. we know the most mm -hmm. about is the Hydro Authority, which belonged to Nouvellet. He was initially the- Wait, that's the strongest? ...obtain the title of Sovereign and command absolute authority over their respective element. The Draconic Authority we know the most about is the Hydro oh. Authority, which belonged to Nouvellet. I clearly can't listen. He was in I clearly can't listen. Uh, she said the the one we know the most about. Sorry, go on. Initially, the heart of the primordial sea, pumping the primordial sea water throughout the land in the same way a heart pumps blood through a body. Mm. According to the dross of pure sacred dewdrop, all life into that comes from the primordial sea, which makes it analogous to the primordial soup theory, which describes a set of conditions on Earth that produce the proper materials for life to form. All right, chat. Real fucking question. Who in chat has read every single fucking lore tidbit on the weapon, on the artifact, on the fucking ascension materials? Please, please tell me. Me? Me? Stop lying. There's no way you've read every single one, you liars. There's oh, no, no way. There's no way. <laughs> Some of them? Some I believe. Some, I believe, you're currently re- All right. That's crazy. You see, this is why I need these channels, because I don't read. This type of responsibility of creating conditions for life, coupled with Skirk's comments suggesting that many planets possess primordial dragons, suggests that the nature of dragons is to settle on planets and cultivate them until they are suitable for life by creating vascular systems like ley lines throughout the planets they inhabit. So it makes perfect sense that the ley lines would serve as a kind of regulation system for nature and that the system would be linked with the dragons themselves. Especially once you realize that the ley lines and earth veins also go by the name of dragon veins in China. So oh. yeah, dragons control the system of the natural or physical world. Oh, and for this oh. reason, I like to think of the elements of the dragons as the power of nature itself. Honestly, that... Look, that makes sense. I mean, fuck. Nouvellet cries and it rains. That makes so much sense to me. Like, is that... Is that crazy? Like, that, that just makes sense. Wasn't the case, then a dragon like Ajdaha that feeds off the ley lines directly would be kind of weird. Nouvellet's vision story calls this era of dragons the original order of the world, one ruled by the dragon king huh? Nibelung. But we'll come back to him later. Oh. And as people living through the era of climate change would know, tampering with nature can have terrible, terrible consequences. Side effects may include environmental anomalies like turning a lush mountain paradise into a frozen wasteland or no. creating a never-ending thunderstorm and time loop on a secluded island or turning a rainforest into a desert just to name- Yeah, thanks a lot, dragons. Anyway. Um, bro, I really want that fucking theory about uh, the Descender being the Dragon King. But not the Dragon King. You know what I mean? God, I, I want that theory to be so true.
Name a few things. Uh, but those few things are all things that Celestia did, by the way. They threw Celestial Nails down at the ley lines, and every impact of them completely changed the landscape. In other words, they really screwed up the ley lines in the area. And this is one of our best examples of the Earth being forced to submit to the will of Heaven, a concept that we're heaven. about to become very familiar with. In his Chenyu Veil analysis video, Great. Aru Haseki pointed Love out that heavenly change. principles can also be read as natural Better order, earlier. making the sustainer of heavenly principles the sustainer of the natural order. I'm going to leave a link to that video below if you want to check it out later. But to be a little bit more precise, the heavenly principles are actually called Tian Li, or oh. Heaven's Law, which is then defined as the natural order of all things because all things Bro, follow. Heavenly principles is a cool name. Heaven's Law? That goes so hard. What are you talking about? Why didn't we call it Heaven's Law? What the fuck? Dude, that sounds like a shit. Follow the law of heaven. Find as the natural order of all things because all things follow the law of heaven at least according to Taoist principles. This is something we actually see referenced a few places throughout the game, but the one you're probably most familiar with is Zhang Li's burst line, I will have order. Now yep. this line lost a lot of its nuance in translation because the original line is actually something more like, I'm gonna- Don't you say I will have law. I butcher this, I'm so sorry. Tian Dong Wan Xiong, and according to Terra localizations, this is supposed to be a Chinese idiom which more literally translates to the heavens move every manifestation of nature, or the world follows heaven's order. Or, that is vastly different. Or heaven leads, all will follow. Those are very different. Those are very different. Wow. Heaven leads, all will follow. I mean, I guess the thing is, Zhongli attack does look like something out of Celestia. It's something that oh, the brother, Heavenly Principle... This guy stinks! Dude, it does look like something that the Heavenly Principle would use as an attack. And it does come from the heavens. So, it does make sense. The world follows heaven's order. Fuck. If this line had come from any other character, I might have brushed it off, but it came from Zhongli, and Zhongli An is the one responsible for illuminating countless adepti and teaching them adeptal arts. And remember, illumination yep. is cultivation, the process of refining your chi or divine power. Before and the Chen Yu Veil quest is very specific about the power to suppress nature through the spirit veins being adeptal power, divine power. And if the power to suppress or control nature forcefully belongs to Celestia, then Zhongli has essentially been teaching people how to wield the powers of heaven for as long as he's been into that. I Chat. Random thought. <laughs> Random bullshit thought completely out the bullshit wazoo that is my random fucking brain. Could Geo be the closest thing to the heavenly principle's powers? <laughs> and is that I, Geo can't blend with fucking anything? <laughs> Is that why? <laughs> Wait, like, hold on a second. Huh. <laughs> like... <laughs> I mean... It, like, kind of makes sense. It is absolutely a bullshit theory, like, obviously. But it's just, like, you know? Just a thought. It would be wild if that is the reason why Geo can't, like, blend it well with anything else. Hmm. Maybe one day they'll answer that. I think it's therefore reasonable to assume that Celeste... You edited this video? No, you fucking didn't. I was wondering why Dendro and Geo don't have reactions. No, you didn't. Oh my god, you did! <laughs> Yo, look! There you are! There you are in the credits. Let me zoom in. Yo, shout out to Queer Bunny. Let's go! That's crazy, hey. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> yeah, we're just watching this video right now to pass the time. It's a very interesting video. Steel or heavenly powers I love the editing on these videos, by the way. Literally have, authority compared to literally have sung the praises of the editing style because it reminds me of Machinima. 
like Genshin doing a, a like a Genshin Machina Machinima video essay. Terrestrial or elemental powers given that heaven rules over the earth, but that also means that divine powers should allow for the bending of the rules of the world because they are the rules of the world, or at least a way in which the rules of the world can be dictated. Which might be why you can use them to allow a normal human to manipulate elemental energy without a vision, something that should otherwise be impossible mm. because it goes against the rules of the world. Right. If you don't know what I'm talking about, allow me to introduce you to the Kairagis. These guys can infuse their swords with pyro and electro, yet none of them oh. have visions or delusions, and it's all thanks to an adeptal art. And no, I didn't misspeak there. The shikifuda technique that they use to infuse their blades with the elements comes from the Kamuna arts, which was created by Kamuna Harunosuke, who learned it from the adepti of Liwe, and that's how they bypass the requirement of a vision when manipulating elemental energy. They're using an adeptal art to force nature to bend to their will. They're bypassing the rules of the world because they basically have a permit to do so. And you know what other weird thing is an adeptal art? Putting one's consciousness into an object the way that A did. And A learned this art from Yaimiko, who learned it from Kamuna Harunosuke, who learned it from the Liwe Adepti. And who Jesus. did the Adepti learn it from? Zhongli, which is why I'm giving his burst lines a bombastic side eye right about now. But here's the thing. Adeptal energy and chi are basically the same thing as far as Genshin it's is all concerned. And this divine power lets you manipulate the worlds in ways that you shouldn't be able to. But this divine power shares commonalities with one other kind of power that we've seen, the power of will or reason. The fact that both adeptal energy and will are seen as powers of the divine is enough for me to question whether or not they are actually the same thing. The logic here is that the power of will is strongest in descenders, and the power of descenders is what folks like Rene, Deshret, and Remus seem to be leveraging in order to overthrow heaven. By mm, merging heaven. thousands of wills together, they can perhaps create a collective will that can match the size and strength of a descender will. And if the spirit veins are related to the power of heaven and will has the power to rewrite the rules of the world, which we know it does because that's kind of the whole plot of the game, then a will as powerful as a descender's is likely necessary to control the spirit veins on a global scale. And mm. some of Renee's notes actually support this hypothesis. Uh, also, Queer Bunny, if you're still here and you edit these videos, could you let Ashikai know to put subtitles and not just the auto-generated ones, please? For Thank example, <laughs> he claims that pure elemental energy lacks will altogether, and it is therefore impossible for it to, quote, break from the rules. Therefore, elemental power has less authority than the power of will. And if elemental energy obeys both the power of will and divine power, then these two powers must be the same thing, or at least similar enough to be almost indistinguishable from each other. And if Jesus. nature is regulated by the ley lines which possess no will of their own, and the spirit veins have the power to suppress nature, then changing the world really is as simple as using your will to manipulate the spirit veins and the ley lines will then follow those instructions, thereby reshaping the physical world. In other words, the spirit veins are blueprints or instructions and the ley lines are compelled to follow those instructions. Uh -huh. The earth obeys heaven's commands. And this is why during the ancient sacrifice of sacred brocade quest, oh. Fujin was concerned only with fixing the spirit veins instead of the ley lines. The ley lines themselves weren't actually broken. They were doing- Ling Yuan. Anyway. Exactly what they were supposed to, only they were following the wrong set of instructions. And those instructions were a result of Ling Wan's tampering. So Fujin oh, just Wong. needed enough adeptal power in order to fix the instructions that the ley lines were following from the spirit veins, and the ley lines would then correct themselves. That was the true purpose of the Rain Jade Rite. The divine envoy of heaven, Fujin, would use the power of heaven to issue heaven's command that the ley lines then had to obey. Wow. This is something we also see stated in the scroll of streaming song where Nabu Malikata, a seely from heaven, poses a riddle which goes something like, as above, so below, and as right. at the bottom, so to the top, yet only top to bottom may be, and never bottom to top. To which Ruka Devada replied, What did you say? You speak of the universal law created in heaven, the divine laws established in the beginning. There's more to this passage in the book, but these are the key lines because they're explicitly stating that the orders are given from heaven to earth and never the other way right. around. Yet heaven they just and said earth bottoms should can't always... Top. Tops are switches, but bottoms are not. ...match each other. 
Is this not a blueprint production line relationship? It's like thoughts become things, or mind shapes matter, or the immaterial dictates the form of the material, or the divine commands the mortal. So okay, yes. we've established that heaven or celestia uses divine power, also known as adeptal power or will, to mm -hmm. manipulate the spirit veins which then forces the ley lines to reshape the world. And one suspicious man playing host to an adeptus can show us just how celestia makes this happen. Baiju practices traditional what? Chinese medicine, and that includes working with the body's meridians. Those are the vital veins we talked about at the beginning of the video. A knowledgeable person can tamper with someone's hey, meridians yo! by stimulating pressure points located at various places throughout the body's vital massage. veins. This is generally used medicinally to encourage the body's natural healing potential by releasing blockages. Think of it like removing a bunch of debris from a river in order to let the water flow more freely. Conversely, meridians can also be manipulated as a form of self-defense, blocking off energy oh, flow throughout the body and causing internal damage or complete immobilization. That's what Baiju's doing here in his demo video, lightly pressing specific pressure points on the treasure hoarder's body in order to cut off the flow of qi, thus rendering them immobile. This is like putting a dam in a river and restricting the flow of water. I think most people in the West are more familiar with pressure point manipulation as it relates to the practice of acupuncture, which uses the exact right. same principles I listed earlier, except with needles instead of external pressure from You're something always extra. like fingers. I am. Now imagine if you tried to do this to the ley line meridians using a giant needle. You know, like a celestial nail. That's right! I believe that Celestia is practicing global acupuncture on the world like it's a living, breathing thing. Who said that earlier? Someone literally jokingly said that earlier. Someone literally in chat joked about... Was it you, Celestial? We were, you were talking about the fucking Celestia pillars. Talking about the fucking pillars that were in uh, the chasm as what, bro? I saw that shit and I was like, oh, eh, that's funny. That's crazy. That's crazy. Acupuncture on the world. So imagine the ley lines flowing through the earth, pumping elemental energy like blood through its veins, regulating and shaping the natural, physical world, as all things should be. The spirit veins then serve as a set of instructions or blueprints that the ley lines are supposed to follow in order to know what direction they're supposed to go or shape the world. But I think sometimes the ley lines might require a little extra assistance, like a manual override to a normally automated process. By targeting important pressure points within the ley lines with a celestial acupuncture nail, Sorry, Celestia um, can hey, manually override Sorry, the ley lines' chat. activity and force them to comply. To compare the function of the nails to the spirit veins, the spirit veins could change the path a river takes through the landscape, while a celestial nail could make that river flow backwards, something that huh. the river would never be able to do on its own. And this combined system of nails and spirit veins is collectively known as fate. In Nouvellet's fifth oh. character story, he says that, quote, fate is merely the manner in which the present ruler of this world plays with living beings. And oh! You have my attention. It's implied to be the method by which Celestia controls Tevat as a whole. And that might mean that Celestia's system of fate is related to the spirit veins. Wait, then but the persona is music is from Queer Bunny? Head. Hey, yo, Queer Bunny. You have great taste in music. I'm just saying. I I've been praising it. I, I, I give a like for the persona music, so uh, good job. It's an Arlecchino one? Shit system of fate can you tell ashi to do honkai videos star rail specifically thank you <laughs> is related to the spirit veins. but how is that for possible the one. you might ask during the parade of providence event layla wonders if the ley lines are just the reflections of stars upon the earth which is the idea that i've been pitching this entire hey, I think video the, the queer heavens bunny. move and everything else follows its command the ley lines are a reflection of the stars in the sky and we know that the concept of fate in Genshin is linked to the stars since you can literally read your fate by looking at them. But unreconciled stars taught us that the sky of Tevat is false, and the stars are simply rocks hanging in that false sky that we've come to know as the firmament. But perhaps they're not just rocks, but instead small spirit stones, mini nails, oh. kind of like the nail fragments found oh. around the chasm in Dragonspine. And it's holding it together because like Chicken Little, the sky is a lie. And uh, yeah, we're going to be able to play through Celestia.
fine. When you think about it, both the nails and the star crystals seem to be able to manipulate people's minds, so even if they're not exactly the same thing, the they might be similar enough to get lumped together. Assuming the nails are controlled by spirit veins, we might then think of them as pins and the spirit veins as threads strung between the pins, much like the pins and yarn used to construct a simple pin loom. Which makes this system of fate Celestia uses to control the whole world a sort of loom of fate. This is kind of reminiscent of an asterism, like the stars are just random dots in the sky until you mm. draw lines between them, right? So the stars here would be the pins of the loom while the lines that create the image are the threads, the spirit veins. That's your- Shut the fuck up, no it's not constellation. But the thing is, the spirit vein threads of the loom are probably part of a fancy machine. Otherwise, why would Nouvellet claim that the head of Celestia had their quote, functions ruined and could no longer use their absolute authority to suppress the original order of the world after the invasion that started Wait the Archon minute. War? Functions isn't exactly a term you use for a person, a and yes, the term in Chinese has the same mechanical implications, at least as far as I can tell, which suggests that fate itself is part of a machine, a machine with a potentially questionable origin. During the summertime Odyssey event, we had to repair the projector that powered the Valurium Mirage, right. but it takes the shape of a spinning wheel used to make threads that would later be woven on a loom. Which is exactly what this is because the preprint the central hub projector was made from is literally a spinning wheel. Idea, who was in charge of this projector, used it to bring the wishes of people to life, but only within the confines of the bottle, which feels reminiscent of Celestia in that they can probably only control the fate of people within the confines of the firmament. It also relates to the wishes idea because wishes reaching Celestia is apparently how visions are granted and visions are part of your fate. Now the central hub in Bottle oh, Land spins so, around huh? a core, which is why it's called a core wheel in Chinese. And this core is powered by objects that represent the memories and wishes of the people who visited the bottle in the past, which are then used to create copies of those people and give them a fixed destiny of achieving their dreams within the bottle. Now at the time, I didn't think much of this beyond the normal side eye for the Loom of Fate references, but I have since become initiated in the ways of the Xianzha, and I now know that a core is actually a kind of crystal that forms inside of a beast or a human when they cultivate their chi to a certain degree, and I made an entire video explaining why visions are actually these Xianzha style cores. But I didn't just argue They're that cores are visions. I also argued that visions and cores are types of dragon pearls. You can watch that video I mean, for the full explanation. I would try. Here, but for now, I mean, it does seem like a lot of folks the get their powers Kokumi from went dragons. The reason went to Land was to search for the missing half of a sacred relic she called the Shinro Casket. She possessed its pearl, but its clamshell was hidden away in the core of the central hub for unknown reasons. Now the Shinro casket was made with the remains of a yokai called a Shinkiro, which responds to the wishes of the people who pray to it, which grants it power. But according to yokai.com, Shinkiro literally translates into clam breath tower, and it's not a yokai at all, but instead a supernatural phenomenon created by a Shen, which is a big magical clam, and also a type of dragon. These Shen dragons basically project their breath into the sky, creating mirages of fantastical cities, which kind of sounds like Celestia to me. I mean, the island is even transparent, kind of like a mirage, but a mm. Okay, look, wait, Oops, let's not get distracted here, because I gotta point out that Qi is often translated as breath or breathing, which means that these Shen are potentially projecting their Qi into the sky. So once the shell and the pearl are together, they activate the artificial core of the spinning wheel, and we can see the representations of spirit veins coming off of it, allowing the mirage to cover the entirety of of the bottle. And this made me wonder, if the remains of a dragon were used to power a spinning wheel of fate within Bottle Land, could the remains of a different dragon be used to power a spinning wheel of fate in Tevat? Possibly. Our best draconic candidate for that is Nibelung, the Dragon King. Why? Yes, I know this is Zhongli. <laughs> <laughs> because oh, you are cowards and won't give us vigil. He ruled over <laughs> all of the other elemental Fair. dragons, which would make him the sovereign of all sovereigns, or better yet, the ruler of the original natural order, the original heavenly principles, the Tian Li or Heaven's Law that predated the arrival of Celestia. This might be why Nouvellet calls Nibelung Tianfu or the Heavenly Father, which is just another name for God, really. But to use mm. the word Tian or Heaven here makes me suspect that he was actually a Tian. Shen 
Shen or Tian Long, or maybe even a Shen Long, Translate, a divine oh, I know spirit Shen Long. dragon. I know so Shen Long. So it's a celestial dragon rather than a terrestrial elemental dragon. And since the spirit veins are used to issue orders to the ley lines, and the ley lines are affiliated with the dragons, that's then the spirit veins might have originally belonged to another dragon, to Nibelung. And that's why the systems of the ley lines and spirit veins are so similar, yet still distinct. The ley lines carry the elemental energy overseen by the terrestrial dragons, while the spirit veins carry the divine energy, the divine will, overseen by the celestial dragon, the original god of Tevat. In God. fact, it's possible that the spirit veins themselves are just a projection of Nibelung's power, or chi, just like how the Shen dragons project their chi into the sky. And if he's a Chinese dragon, which is pretty likely, then he has to have a pearl, just like the Shen. Now, pearls of Chinese dragons contain all their power and wisdom, and should anyone obtain a dragon's pearl, they would have access to all that power and wisdom, sometimes even becoming a dragon themselves. It's kind of like how Nouvellet lost his authority, his pearl, to Fossilors, and he was only able to regain his true power once the pearl was back in his possession. But while it was in Fossilor's possession, mm -hmm. she was able to wield its power despite it not belonging to her originally. So if someone were to say, steal Nibelung's authority pearl, then they would obtain all of his powers. And I think the Primordial One did exactly that. I think they tricked Nibelung, stole his pearl, then turned his own power against him. Huh. And that was why Nibelung was forced to leverage the will found within the abyss. This. It was the only power with enough authority to even have a chance to counter his own power. And it's probably why Celestia is so interested in suppressing the Abyss, and why the Abyss Twin tries to use the power of the Abyss. Now we know that Nibelung died and returned during the Dragon War, but beyond that we don't really know what happened to him or where he went. His the theory that Nibelung is the third descender or whatever, that using the power of the fucking Abyss and then it's his fucking goddamn body and carcass that are the Gnosis, and then that's why the Cerezo wants the Gnosis, where fucking she's gonna take him to Nat uh, get all the Gnosis, go to Natlin, which is apparently the nation of revival. Revive fucking this dude. Uh, bro, that theory about, d d bro, that theory about the Dragon King, d d dude, Nibelong, my theory is Nibelong is the- How? Ah, no. What? How? Anyway. His pearl, however, we might know a little bit more about. Based on the Bottle Land model, we can assume that spirit veins require something that can physically spin the spirit veins, and something that can power that thing that spins the spirit veins. Naturally, the spinning apparatus should have been Nibelung himself, while the power source is the pearl. But if the- Bring back Sonora over Nibelung? You are insane to think that. You are insane to think that. You want a- just a normal immortal witch over the literal dragon god? You're insane. The primordial one lacked Nibelung's body or the ability to spin spirit veins themselves, then they might have created a literal machine to do Thank the spinning, the just like the core wheel. The pearl is the core, in case that wasn't very clear. So Celestia's got this big ass core wheel spinning fate threads with the power of Nibelung's pearl when all of a sudden, bang, invaders from beyond the firmament break through and war breaks out. The pearl is lost in the struggle and the machine loses its functions because it has no power source. Well, uh. a power source for your worldwide control system is kind of important, so you gotta send someone to go find it, and wait a minute. This sounds an awful lot like the Battle Pass story, and that story was about a princess who goes looking for a Genesis Pearl. I'm gonna be honest, chat. I watched the Battle Pass story once, usually skip it, completely forgot it actually has a story. Well, that seems like a fitting name for the Pearl of Nibelung, who is the Heavenly Father, aka the equivalent of the monotheistic god of Abrahamic religion. I mean, he was responsible for Genesis, right? And you see the snake in the pink shell with the pearl? Well, in Bottle Land, the Shen's pearl was hidden away in Watatsumi, a nation of the snake god Orobashi. Now, hmm. I'm not saying Orobashi is this snake, I don't think he is, but I do think the allegory is accurate. There might be a dark snake or dragon god within the abyss that's guarding the Genesis pearl the princess <gasps> needs to find. Or maybe she already found it, but was deceived, and now believes herself to be the queen of Chad, the kingdom of darkness. 
Darkness, aka the Abyss. Chad, I got in. And hey, Fischl was a princess of the Kingdom of Darkness. Maybe this princess is her. Hmm. Yeah, but maybe maybe we don't go down that rabbit hole right now. There's already I'm a lot going on I'm gonna finish this video here. and then. But okay, let's assume that this Genesis Pearl is found. What then? Does Celestia just pop it back into the Fate Machine and continue business as usual? I don't think so. See, Celestia's control over Tevat is contingent on their access to Nibelung's authority. Without it, the whole system becomes unstable, and it's quite possible that all the work Celestia has done reshaping the Earth will begin to undo itself because the Earth actively resists the dramatic changes imposed on it by Celestia. Things like the turbulence within the ley lines, mutated plants like regispines, and even hypostases are caused by Tevat resisting these changes. Fujin also says something to this extent. Without regular maintenance, the Earth will revert to how it's supposed to be, not how Celestia wants it to be. Nature may lack a will, but it still has a certain pattern of behaviors that it's kind of inclined to follow. You Maybe know the center I mean? took the Dragons pearl? Dragons probably understood how to work with nature mm. since they are beings of nature. But Celestia wants it to be something that it's just not supposed to be. Think of it like if you have straight hair, but you want curly hair, so you get a perm. Well, the perm uh -huh. doesn't last forever, right? Like your hair eventually reverts back to its straight form unless you curl it again. The real problem is that the world that existed before Celestia came might not be hospitable to humans. After all, the world wasn't I mean, originally fair. designed with humans in mind. So all this time, we've been looking at Descender this and the power of reason that, but if this theory is at all accurate, without the Genesis Pearl, the power of a Descender's will is kind of meaningless. We still need Nibelung's Authority Pearl to power the machine or the whole system falls apart. I had to stop myself so many times from spiraling and going on extremely long tangents because I have thoughts, many thoughts, and over 26 I mean, pages of cut content, me. which I will do something with eventually, maybe. But hey, while the names of all my enablers, I mean channel members, scroll on by, let me share a couple of those cut topics with you because I couldn't find a good place to slot them in and I think they're still cool and relevant. So most of Baiju's kit comes from Changsheng, right? And Changsheng is an adeptus, okay. which means that her powers are adeptal arts. Well, during his elemental burst, you'll notice that every now and again he shoots out a ghostly snake. This is probably the spirit form of Changsheng, if only because those snakes are straight up called spirit veins. Hmm. Although in Chinese they're actually called spirit qi. It kind of implies that she's using her chi to manipulate the elemental power of Baiju's vision, and I just think that's kind of cool. I also didn't get to talk much about the other two places the term spirit veins was mentioned, but one of them was during the Sacred Sakura cleansing quest, which I thought was very interesting, mostly because during A's second story quest, Makoto tells her- All right. Aki, good video. A lot of information that got dumped on me. Uh, my brain does hurt a little bit, not gonna lie. Um... But it was a good video. Made me think about a lot of different shit.